This show is kind of like an earthworm. You could chop it up, and each piece can kind of live on its own. Um, that was really fucking clever. Sugar and toys. Sugar and toys. Sugar and toys. Sugar and toys. Hi, my name is Carl Jones. This is Brian Nash. We're the creators of Sugar and Toys. Uh, Brian and I have been working together for quite some time. Uh, we produced and wrote on the Boondocks, uh, Black Dynamite, uh, Freak Nick the Musical. Um, we also worked with Tyler the Creator on the Jellies. And we just finished up Laser Wolf with uh, Henry Bonsu and Drum along with Vince Staples. And um, we're here today to talk about Sugar and Toys and why we wanted to make the show. Uh, why, did, why did we make the show? I mean, yeah, we've been at this a long time and uh, we were really excited to have the opportunity to do our first uh, hybrid live action animated sketch comedy show. We wanted to make a show that uh, spoke to the times of what's kind of going on right now, both in terms of music culture, hip hop culture, uh, some light political stuff. <laughs> Of all the pieces in this show, I mean, to me, there's one that really sticks out is the one that really hits the hardest. So playing while black, that um, see, this one was was interesting because uh, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of niggas getting shot by the police and for doing nothing. So to try to you know doing satire, like you try to find the most extreme version of that idea so you can make the point, you know, really get the point across. And the crazy part about it is it wasn't even still that far from the truth. You know, so like we, we, we pushed it as far as we can go by using little kids and taking the idea or, or framing, the, the, framing the sketch like it was a, a commercial for like a toy set. Hey there, bad guy. Bad guy, but I ain't got no gun, knife, or weapon of any kind. It's okay, I'll use my imagination. It doesn't matter what's in your hand. Oops, forgot to turn on my body cam. In this game, you can tell that white man anything you want. Are you reading this? Oh, he read it all right. Please. It doesn't matter what the fuck <laughs> you have. Why? Because you're black. Hell, you can have no arms at all. Nigga. We wanted it to hit people hard. Mm -hmm. Like, we didn't want it to be easy to digest. We wanted it to be something that actually was very disruptive and made you feel uncomfortable. As a matter of fact, like Brian was saying, when we were on the set, I remember like the first time when we when when the squibs went off, it was hard for me to recover to watch it again, you know, to do the second take. Like it was it was really, really it was powerful, man. One of the beautiful things about this show and about and about the, the culture at Fuse, honestly, is the idea of trying to hit diverse topics. And obviously, anyone that's been living in America during the Trump administration, there's been nonstop uh, just what we consider to be a horrific platform that's been given to uh, xenophobia, to racism, uh, and to uh, bad behavior in general. We kind of start the uh, the piece in a in a Chili's style restaurant. Uh, where uh, a bunch of drunk uh, uh, white, white people like are trying to make Cinco de Mayo white again. I'm just so fucking Mexican right now. Tequila shots, bitch! Lost Dreamers is just this episode where we thought, like, you know, the, the what's been kind of going on in terms of the disrespect uh, that's been uh, given to, uh, to uh, the immigrant community and to Latinos in general. You know, got shit to say? I mean, you said it all. I said a lot, man. So what well, Cardi well, B, well, the Cardi B spelling bee is my favorite piece that we've ever done in the show. Your word is burr. B U R R R R R R R R. We didn't have a button for the episode originally, and the good thing was, remember when we were oh, writing that? That's when Cardi threw her the shoe, threw the right. shoe at yeah. uh, at uh, what was it? At Nicki Minaj. At Nicki Minaj. Yeah. So we were very grateful when she threw that shoe. And it gave us a blow to the yeah, yeah, sketch. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you so fucking stupid. <laughs> ah! You spelled it burr. We was looking for burr. Oh, crrr. sugar and toys. Sugar and toys. Yay, easy and Jesus. So yeah, we started out like doing a parody of Ed, Ed and Eddie, which was a show that aired on Cartoon Network. Love like, that the, show. I think it was like in the late. 90s, yeah. I think, yeah. Kanye West sometimes felt like there was a bunch of different Kanyes at the wheel. What up, Jesus? Oh, what up, gay? What up, Yeezy? Huh? So yeah. it seemed kind of funny that they would almost, Jesus. like, that would explain some of his crazy behavior. Tweety, my paradigm is shitting. Kim, keep Nick's cannon out of your mouth. Lego Atlanta. Lego that was, Atlanta. I think, I remember the idea for that started when we wanted to show you how real Legos live. Lego Atlanta to me is a good example of like this thing that we do a lot, which is like if we hate somebody, 
we'll go after them hard, but if we're fans, we'll go like twice as hard at right, them. Right, right, right. Like we're like gigantic yeah, Atlanta we fans. Donald like Donald, and Atlanta, yeah. Yeah, so like the idea that's of- That's like my favorite show of all time. Uh, yeah. veg Veggie Purge, I mean, that's another example of like a very Mad Magazine kind of thing is like, you know, the idea of, you know, the Purge movies, you know, the super popular, have this incredible iconography of like one night a year, uh, any all crime is 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 legalized. Right, and and then me me being a vegan, like I just noticed like how like like weird and cult like the vegan community is, and you know I mean it's like really almost kind of scary. I was a big fan of the Littles cartoon growing up, like when I was a kid. I thought that shit was creepy. So personally. we were just thinking like what would be a, like in our sugar and toys world, like what would be the version our version of the Littles, which this one kind of this naturally lent itself to the idea for the sketch, which is taking all the rappers that have, because there's so many rappers with the word, with, with Lil in front of their name. So we thought like, well, what if those were the little people that were actually living in the walls of this kid's house? Hey man, we ain't magical people. We rappers, man. Lil Baby, Lil Zan, Lil Pump, Lil Uzi Vert, Lil <laughs> Sludge Bob uh, is, is uh, I mean, I don't know if you've looked at the ocean recently, but it's in it's bad really, really, shape. Really, really fucked up. So, you know, the idea of, like, literally uh, taking the representation of, of, a, of, of a polluted ocean and turning it into a bad neighborhood, turning it into, right. like, a, you, know, a, 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 you know, like a hood that has, you know, all of the kind of social ills, uh, you know, uh, all of the kind of issues that would be going on in a neighborhood that's not getting the care that it requires. That's kind of how we're treating our oceans. It does come off like it's a kid's cartoon, but we're really, like, dealing with some real... Environmental shit. Uh, hologram and the Hendersons. What in the hell is it? Oh, uh, well, I'm no expert, but it looks like, uh... Y'all hit me! <gasps> the Tupac hologram. Dad, can we keep him? That sketch feels, like, really good for this show because it, it combines Harry and the Hendersons, which, if you don't know, was, uh, was an 80s movie about a a suburban white family that accidentally runs over Bigfoot and adopts him as their pet. Why do they call them apartments when them shit is so close together? They should call them close together mitts. Kyle kind of has like this, this kind of Will Smith kind of charisma and, and persona. So it worked really good because we were trying to pull off, like you said, this Nickelodeon style Disney sitcom kind of feel with the live action pieces in. He he's really brought that, like, I mean. He's, I mean, he's just extremely likable, and he's a really, really great actor. Common, yes! Look, bro, um, I need you to come over here right now, and we gotta make a song. But yeah, he also, like, there's something about his energy that is like, I mean, I don't think innocent is the exact right word, but yeah. there is like kind of a sincerity. There really, it, like, like he, his energy really evokes the kind of like, again, sort of nostalgia and, and love for cartoons and, and of just what it was, you know, what it was like to kind of, be a kid. He is definitely the entry point for most of America that watches this show. So yeah, no, this this was this was fun, man. Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let's let's come back next week and talk to you guys about some of the other stuff we got coming. We got meme girls coming next week. Meme girls. Yeah, they're not mean. They're mean. Meme ma -ma 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 -ma. And we got, we got whoa, uh, Vicky. Mm -hmm. We got some some Blues Clues parodies and mm -hmm. some. Fun, crazy ass shit. You gonna like it as much as we like it. I don't know what else. I love you. Sugar and toy. My sugar and toy.